Welcome back to another video. My name is Stephen Foster, and today we are talking about the email service Hey from Basecamp, formerly 37 Signals. And I'm going to talk about why I initially signed up for this product two years ago, why I've canceled it as of today, as of making this video. I am no longer using Hey, and I'll talk a bit about the few things that I think Hey could do to win me back as a customer, potentially win back new customers and maybe even yourself. But before we dive into this video, leave a comment down below about what email service you use and why, whether it's privacy, whether it's uh, vanity URLs or vanity addresses, or if it's price. I wanna see if in the comments below I can discover potentially new email services or learn more about email services that you like. So leave a comment down below. Now a lot was going on in the year 2020, but Hey was a very controversial announcement and release. If you remember, there was app store controversy that was not only affecting the implications of Hey itself, but potentially all app stores available on all platforms or all mobile platforms. But with all that controversy eventually coming and going, Hey out of the gate was actually a pretty great product. There was a lot of hype for it and it's easy to understand why. The team at Basecamp is well known for delivering great products. The Basecamp product itself is great. And for those of us who have been around on the internet for more than a decade, remember probably Campfire and High Rise, which were a couple other applications that Basecamp made. But Hey really banked itself on three new things, and that was privacy first and foremost, stopping things like tracking pixels and remote image resource loading in order to sort of like track and follow you through your email, which is kind of like a, ugh, it's weird that people can do that, you know? Hey was also trying to have a cool vanity sort of address look for their customers, so being able to have something at hey.com, and I even remember that Hey was charging, I think, like $1,000 or more for some of the three-digit and four-digit uh, accounts. Uh, so if you had a four character or three character at hey.com, you could pay a pretty penny for that. And Hey was also just trying new things in general, whether it was the M box for this like important uh, stuff that should be delivered to you, the screener feature, which was supposed to filter out any senders that you hadn't previously received email from, and also sort of this like filtering structure for paper trail and like newsletters, marketing emails that you might want to read, but don't necessarily need to importantly have immediately. And when it came to privacy, it seemed like Basecamp would be able to deliver on that. And for the past two years, as far as I know, it hasn't been an issue with the platform. I really did like being able to get the email address that I wanted at hey.com, which uh, I wasn't able to get on other free services like uh, Gmail or Outlook. And I really did like the concept of the screener. It was really nice to know that someone couldn't just email me and have it show up in my inbox and me have, have never heard of them before. I did actually really like that. But now, two years on, I really started having to evaluate was Hey worth $100 a year? I think it's like $99 a year that the Basecamp team charges for Hey. And to be honest, I was really disappointed with a few things with the service. The first being the iOS and Android apps that were offered by the team. They clearly feel like non-native apps, and I would constantly run into this bug when swiping across an email that would archive multiple emails or show as had been seen or marked as read, whatever you, whatever like the parlance is in the application for that, where you swipe for one and sometimes like two or three messages would archive. And that was on the latest version as of June, 2022 and the latest versions of iOS, not including the betas. The web app isn't much better and the desktop application is also very clearly non-native or a non-native app. Now, while you can hook up Hey to something like a third-party desktop client for your email, whether that's like Apple Mail, Thunderbird, or something else, I think for Hey to push forward this vision of what they want email to be, I feel like having great apps to support that vision and not just be like an IMAP uh, front end for like some IMAP client downstream was kind of what I was hoping for. If, if I'm paying you $100 a year and your custom app, the app that you say is gonna deliver your service's best features and functionality isn't native, doesn't feel fast, and has bugs that cause the entire experience to feel kind of, kind of second rate, honestly. Um, I wouldn't even use a service that had these issues if it was free, let alone continue to pay for them. And especially at $100 a month, if everything was awesome, whether it would be the iOS apps, whether it be all the bugs were squashed and all, everything as far as like the screener goes and like 
the newsletter stuff goes, if all of that was working well, I don't know if this service would be worth $100 a year. If you look at some of the competition out there, whether it's Google Workspaces or Microsoft's 365 solutions, or some of the smaller offerings as well that are more privacy focused, like FastMail or ProtonMail, all of those services come in at around five to six dollars a user and you get a comparable service for about 50% of the price. And even think with something like ProtonMail or FastMail, you're kind of getting really the same privacy features. Uh, yeah, you're gonna connect to an IMAP client, whether it's on your phone or on the desktop, but at least you know it's going to work, <laughs> or hopefully, at least then you can blame whoever makes your client if it doesn't work, right? And some of these services like Google Workspace or Microsoft Office are also offering calendar solutions and uh, workplace apps and collaboration tools. Hey is just email with some publishing features and some privacy features that they've added now over the last couple of years, but I don't think it's worth $100 a year. So while I've canceled Hey for now, Hey does preserve your Hey email address uh, into perpetuity, or at least that's what they say. And I wouldn't mind signing back up for Hey again if they made some changes on a few of these fronts. The first front that I would say is if, if you're gonna continue to sell me this product or this service, at $100 a month, the apps need to be absolutely solid. It can't be running into issues on both desktop and iOS or Android. And I honestly would like to see native apps. If I'm paying $100 a year for your service, I should have a native app. It shouldn't be some ported out of whatever thing, like give me a native app, that is awesome. I think also if you're gonna offer this service at $100 a year for a user, I really would like to see a contact and calendar solution as well. Or if Hey doesn't wanna do something like calendars and offering more workplace collaboration stuff along with their Hey email service offering, while I don't think it's worth $100 a year, I think I would be more willing to pay $20 to $50 a year for the service as it currently stands today. And I think other people might be willing to at least try it for $20 to $50 a year because Hey has been a reliable email service. I don't think it's ever gone down. There's never been a time where I haven't been able to access my email, um, which again is sort of a low bar for a service, but there are very few email services that are spinning up today. I think the most previous email service before Hey that I had seen as like a new service was probably ProtonMail back in 2014. I mean, before that, you have uh, Gmail launching, I think in 2004, was it 2006, somewhere around there. Um, and then Microsoft and Apple have been doing it for probably well over 20 years at this point. So I do wanna call out, hey, on a very positive note and say that I want to see more competition in this space. I admire that they've come into this arena and try to provide a great service. I just think something is, is misaligned. Either the product is overpriced for what it is, or the product needs to find a way to live up to its value that it is asking of its customers. And I would love to hear from you if you're someone who has tried Hey, or if you are not willing to use Hey, or Hey has some exciting features maybe for you, but the price is not there, or maybe it's all great for you. I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. Or if you're not using Hey, whoever your email service provider is, leave it down in the comments below so we at least know um, what's good out there. I think I'm gonna be switching over to Proton Mail. at least give that another go. Uh, Proton recently just updated all their services and you can get stuff like VPNs, calendars, uh, and also file sharing now as well, which looks pretty cool. So that should be something worth checking out. And if you made it this far in the video and you have yet to subscribe to this channel, um, I would love to have you here. I usually do these videos talking about tech, photography, and just sort of overall um, modern lifestyle. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to get the most out of life in the 21st century, and I feel like that's like what this channel is all about. So if that's something that you're into, I would love it if you subscribed. And thank you to everyone who already has. You guys are awesome. Be kind both in life and in the comments below, and like this video to send good vibes across the internet. I still need healing vibes. For those of you who've been following this channel for a little bit, you know I had a freak accident. My left leg is still like, healing, recovering. Uh, I can stand a little bit now, <laughs> but um, walking is like really hard still. And um, I definitely can't run. I definitely can't ride my bike, but I just do want to say thank you to everyone who has sent good healing vibes and all the kind words my way. They are appreciated. And um, with that, we'll do it again soon. Later.
Also, how do, how do you guys dig being back in kind of like this setup? This is sort of the setup that I originally had when we first started making videos on this channel consistently again almost two years ago now, except now we're in a completely different spot of the house. Now we're down in the basement instead of my, my old office upstairs. But um, I don't know. Let me know if you guys like this layout um, because I think I might do a few more videos like this. I'm st I think I like this. I think I like this. I don't know. <laughs> also, if you guys just have like... Um, what should I make my, I have so many like scripts that I've been working on. Would you guys want to see more photography and like camera review stuff? Do you guys want to see more like tech review stuff? I have a couple other videos in the works that are sort of technology related, but they're very analog things. I'm kind of excited about those. I don't know. Leave a comment down below if you guys have a particular, um, thing you want me to check out in mind. Um, yeah, y'all are the best. Appreciate it.